And Sally Mock joins me now from Missoula, Montana. She is the host for Montana Public Radio's weekly political analysis program, Campaign Beat. Sally, can you give us a little local color, describe the scene there? Is the president popular in Montana right now? He is still popular. He's rating in polls about what he was when he got elected. It's actually gone up a little bit. And there was a long line to get into this rally today. There were people coming from all over the western part of Montana, probably some from Idaho as well. And a really raucous crowd and a great reception. I'm sure he's quite pleased. So, Sally, uh, the president often brought up one of his favorite speaking points at this rally, immigration and how tough he is on border security. Is that particular issue very important to the citizens of Montana? Does it resonate there? I think it does resonate. Uh, Montana does have a drug crisis and there is some, uh, certainly a lot of law enforcement people worry about drugs coming in from uh, other countries into Montana. That's an issue here for sure. And I think though the thing that struck me about the president's uh, speech tonight about John Tester was how personal it is with him. He made a point of saying, you know, I think we could do without that vote. We're probably going to pick up some seats in the Senate. But the worst thing is what he did to Ronnie Jackson, the president's favored nominee to head the VA. And he was very upfront about that. I was a little surprised at how uh, he really emphasized that with him. It was he really wants to get back at Tester over the Ronnie Jackson nomination. So this campaigning is a personal vendetta uh, for the president. Um, uh, the president asked his cabinet secretaries recently to slash their budgets by 5%. This comes amid criticism that the federal deficit is rising, which is something that is not normally supposed to happen under a Republican administration. Is that an issue that voters in your state are concerned about? I don't think so, honestly, at this point. I don't think that's something that they necessarily think about as much as they think about health care, as much as they think about the economy, and they don't translate a rising deficit necessarily to what's happening economically in Montana. I think the other thing, though, in terms of economics that struck me about the president's speech was talking about how he has revived the coal industry in Montana. Two weeks ago, one of the largest companies operating in Montana, Westmoreland, declared bankruptcy. So there's a real disconnect in how he is portraying that particular industry in Montana. And the folks here and the folks in the state, they know what the truth is about that. I'm not sure how that particular comment he made will play. But you say health care is a big issue. It, it's, it's interesting to hear, you know, the Republican candidates there both saying that they, you know, want to repeal and replace, but also saying, don't worry, if you have your pre-existing conditions, you will remain insured. It's sort of, you can't have it both ways, right? Right, and I think that that is a, the weakest, probably weakest part of Matt Rosendale's message. He's challenging John Tester on uh, criticizing Obamacare, but his particular plans to replace it sound vague to people, and they also sound a little bit uh, scary to some people because they're not sure they're going to be able to keep pre-existing conditions as something that is now covered. And I think that's probably something that John Tester wants to really hammer home. Right. Is that you may not like Obamacare, but you would like what they're going to do worse. So what are the other issues defining the midterms for the voters there? I mean, we've gone through immigration. You say that is a big issue. Health care. What about guns? The president brought that up. Um, is that something that will drive voters to the polls? Um, the Second Amendment is a big issue in Montana. I'm not convinced it's a big issue in this race. John Tester has been a strong supporter of the Second Amendment for his entire political career. There's very little difference really between he and Matt Rosendale, despite what the NRA mating may, rating may be. Mm -hmm. But John Tester, he would like to maybe have universal background checks. Otherwise, he and Matt Rosendale have the exact same attitude about guns. And I think Montanans know that. I don't think that will be the deciding issue in this race. All right. So 
That's the Senate race there. Let's move on to the House race in Montana. GOP Congressman Greg Gianforte is defending his seat. I thought it was very interesting. The president suggested, you know, that incident that Gianforte had a lot of bad press when he tackled a Guardian reporter, uh, you know, last year. He sort of suggested that it was okay because the voters in Montana don't mind. I mean, how are people going to react to something like that? I don't think that's going to play well here either. Honestly, I, I was surprised that he, uh, that the president brought that up again, and not only brought it up, but bragged about it and yeah. praised Greg and Forte for body slamming a reporter. And I think in the wake of what's happening with the death of uh, a journalist, the Saudi journalist, I don't think most Montanans are probably going to feel okay about that. There was some cheering when he said it, but this is a very much a pro-Trump crowd. I think in the state as a whole, something like that is something Montanans probably would find it, it tasteless at best. And it also sort of flies in the face of his characterization right now of the Democrats as a violent mob if, when he brings that up, you know. Um, so, Sally, is, are these going to be close races? What is the sense that you have there on the ground? Uh, you know, I think it's going to be a really tight race, and uh, I think the president coming here three times is probably having some effect at certainly rallying his base here, but what happens uh, in a couple of weeks is really hard to predict at this point, for sure. All right, we'll be watching those midterms closely. Sally Mock, thank you.